So good afternoon, everyone. My name's Trish. So I'm the Events and Marketing Coordinator for the Stoke-on-Trent and Staffordshire Growth Hub. Um, just want to say a really big thank you to everyone that's joined us today for the Evolving Enterprise through Do Digital webinar. So the purpose of this webinar today really is to introduce a Do Digital campaign that we've successfully run over the past few months and obviously discuss the importance of digital transformation for SMEs. Um, I'm only going to provide a sort of a brief overview of the Growth Hub really because um, we'll like to hear from our specialist business advisors and they'll help you understand a bit more on how they can assist you through your journey. Um, so the Stoke-on-Trent and Staffordshire Growth Hub is actually one of 38 growth hubs established by central government with the purpose of helping private sector growth through access to fully funded support and business growth programmes um, and with a team of accredited business advisors and over 120 referral partners and programmes we are ultimately able to assist your business growth, job creation and obviously in turn growth in the local economy. Um, we are also joined today by our guest speaker from Danes Accountants, Mo, who you'll hear from later. Um, he'll be providing an introduction to cloud accounting, forecasting, KPI metrics and dashboards as part of their newest arm to their business, Evolve. So I'll hand over now to my colleague, Alan Bloomfield. He's one of the specialist digital, digital advisors, sorry, for the IT Bets programme, and he'll go into a bit further detail of what that entails. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, so... Um... Just to introduce myself, as I say, it's Alan Bloomfield. I've, um, my background is I've worked for over 30 years at BT. Um, so when I saw the opportunity with the Grow Growth Hub and the Chamber to, um, to be their digital advisor, I, I sort of grabbed the opportunity. We have got a new digital advisor starting on the 20th of the month as well to, um, so hopefully we'll double our capacity uh, being able to give advice to customers. So just moving into um, the uh, Do Digital series. So. First of all, um, th through the Growth Hub, if you contact the Growth Hub and decide you'd like um, so, uh, some digital advice, um, we run a, a, digi a initial discussion around the eligibility for the IPEP scheme. The IPEP scheme I'll come on to on my next slide. Um, so this is a bit of a discussion around your business and issues you may be having. Uh, report, what we'll do is um, discuss anything, um, you know, your, your process of how you run your business, as I say, any any issues you may be having, any, any areas that you might, might want to implement uh, digital technology. Um, once that's been done, we, we give a report back to you, which will include suggestions and of areas of implementing digital technology to, that may be able to um, improve areas of your business, whether it's um, the process or whether it's just being um, the, your, you know, your digital presence, et cetera. Um, and, and also potentially signposts us to some of our partners, as, as previously uh, mentioned. We also give you access to a digital um, series of webinars that we've been running over the last few months, as Trish mentioned. Those are available online. And then we've also built a digital toolkit, which will help you. Um, uh, so if, for instance, you haven't got the time during the day to, um, to, to access our webinars, you can obviously uh, access them uh, at, a, at another time. But there's some uh, pointers there as well with regards to support that we may be able to help you with as well. Next slide, Trish, please. Thanks. So um, the further support that's uh, uh, available. So we mentioned about eligible businesses. So if, if you're el eligible for uh, the IPEP scheme, that gives you further support. So rather than just that initial discussion and initial report, etc., we then go on to look at up to 12 hours fully funded support where we can come out to site, we can we can look at uh, implementing some of the um, op, you know opportunities that we've suggested. Um, there's also the Staffordshire Gigabit Scheme that provides um, if you're in a in an area where you're struggling to have broadband. Uh, we look at um, there's a voucher scheme to be able to help you with help businesses with the install. Again, that's that's available through the scheme. Um, you may have heard through the um, latest budget is that Richie Sunak decided to put uh, in around about half a billion pound into the digital budget um, and they put in a, a scheme there called help to grow well there's help to grow management as well as help to grow digital um, so again further information if you contact us and then also um, there's some funding around uh, training and obviously we, we've got various uh, pro, uh, training providers that will help you with being uh, fully trained on some of the um, the opportunities that we're going to discuss so if you'd like to contact me, my email address is there, uh, digital at Staffordshire Chambers. And uh, on to the next slide. That's not, who's, who's on next? Oh, 
I'll just do a little introduction here. So I'm just going to pass over to Becky Parker, who is the business helper manager and also the growth of team leader, but also a specialist business advisor. She'll just go into the digital transformation and the importance of that a little bit further. Thanks, Kesh. Yeah, so more than ever, businesses are, are automating processes and developing new digital skills so that they become future proof by building a culture and creating an actionable roadmap. Uh, we recognise that digital, digital can no longer be a bolt on to the side of an organisation, and it's now about having a profound impact on internal structures and departments. We recognise the value that comes from utilising technology to augment and expand performance rather than replacing it. But to unlock potential, businesses need access to the right knowledge and skills and access to funding for implementation. Evolve an Enterprise through Do Digital is a campaign designed to help your organisation build the skills your employees need and bring together a comprehensive package of fully funded support that will assist in the growth of your digital transformation journey. Here are a few words from Alan Rogers, the LEP Chair. So there's not a job or an industry where digital and digital skills are not required. In fact, it's surprising to know that a fifth of businesses are worried about digital and one in ten aren't actually doing anything about it. I'm really passionate that our businesses don't get left behind. The LEP and the growth will be here to support you and we really want to support you through our Do Digital campaign and all the training and all the advice and support we're offering to make sure that you're able to thrive and not just survive. So now you'll just hear from some of our business advice we have available. Um, it's Becky again first, if you want to go into your next part, Beck. Yeah, thanks, Trish. Oh, gosh, what a picture. Um, OK, so as a growth of then, we're a public-private um, partnership organisation, and we were established to drive strategic business growth, where we harness the expertise of all sectors to drive growth um and economic success through supporting businesses like yours with access to finance hr for employee well-being policy and guidance and marketing through strategy for your business export and innovation and signpost into digital skills for the future of, of your workforce but crucially over the last 18 months we've adapted to support businesses throughout the significant challenges of the covid19 pandemic which has inevitably become a historic pivot point for digital transformation before the pandemic, businesses were primarily doing digital, leveraging digital technologies to enhance their capabilities, but still largely relying on legacy operating models. The ITBEP scheme that Alan mentioned can largely support you in the transformation journey. Uh, and here's how we have a team of advisors and specialists can support you um, through evolving enterprise. Introducing Evolving Enterprise from Stoke-on-Trent and Staffordshire Growth Hub, a unique package of fully funded services to help enterprising businesses across Stoke-on-Trent and Staffordshire to fuel their growth ambitions. The first step is to call the business helpline to speak with a qualified advisor. Our helpline offers a comprehensive triage service to unlock fully funded support. For the next step, our accredited business advisors will complete a one-to-one -one diagnostic tailored to each individual business, which will then identify the specialist support needed. Following your diagnostic, our specialists will support you in the relevant areas to evolve your business. The areas our specialists cover are recovery and growth, HR, marketing, international trade, and finance. Take the first steps in evolving your enterprise by contacting our business helpline. Our business advisors and specialists are ready to help you. Call us on 0300 111 8002. Thanks, Becky. Um, yeah, over to myself. So my name is Amanda Swan. I'm the um, HR advisor working on the Growth Hub. Uh, next slide, please, Trish. Thank you. I can complete a one-to-one -one meeting with your business, either by, over the phone or via a, a video call. 
This time is fully funded, so there's no cost to your business. And I can give you guidance on areas that your business may be exposed in terms of employment legislation. What I would say is you don't need to prepare anything for this meeting. But what I will do is leave you with advice and signposting that's applicable to your specific business at this time. Thanks, Trish. Um, just to go through a couple of hot topics at the moment, I do get a lot of queries around recruitment and this is something that I could help your business with. So do you need to recruit at this moment in time? Do you need support setting up a new employee for the first time? Do you know what ID checks you need to complete for a new starter? Are you aware of the costs involved in addition to an employee salary? And are you and your line managers trained in the recruitment selection process? So that's just a little bit of a flavour of some of the recruitment queries that I get that I can help your business with. Um, next slide, please, Trish. Thanks. Um, the um, coronavirus job retention scheme is um, quite a hot topic at the moment with the scheme finally coming to an end at the end of this month. So again, I do get queries around this from businesses. So if you do have employees that are still currently furloughed um, and you need some support with this, just to make sure you are communicating with your furloughed employees in the correct manner. And what are your plans once the scheme comes to an end on the 30th of September this year? Um, we be, your employees would be returning to the office or to the workplace and do you need support with that? Or um, do you actually need pl um, help planning for any potential redundancies uh, for your business and do you need, again, some legal support with that? So that was just to give you a very, very quick overview of some of the queries that I get that I can help you with. Thanks, Trish. Thanks, Amanda. So there's just two other specialist advisors that we do have available. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it today. So I'll just pass you over to those now. We've got a little video, a little video where they'll introduce themselves and explain what it is they can do to help as well. Hi, my name's Richard Brace. I'm the business growth advisor here at the Growth Hub. My job is to help companies that are looking to grow. I can do this by offering general advice, by giving fully funded one-to-one -one diagnostic meetings, or by conducting a growth mapper survey, which is an online digital survey that measures you and your senior management team's perceptions of where you see yourselves in relation to key business issues in relation to your growth strategy. The report is then presented and we discuss all of the key business issues that have been identified and how this can be used to develop your strategy going forward. So if you're interested in this, please give me a call and my details are on the Growth Hub website. I'm the marketing advisor for Stoke on Trent and Staffordshire Growth Hub. I support Staffordshire businesses with their digital marketing strategy. During a session with myself, we'll look at things like your digital footprint, which is any existing marketing that you have as an online presence. That might include your website, social media, any directories that you signed up to, blogs, and any strategy that you have alongside those. So we actually work together on a one-to-one -one basis, so everything that we cover is bespoke to the business. And I can help in scenarios, for example, I work with businesses who say that they put so much time and effort into the marketing, but they don't feel that they have the return. Or on the other hand, I work with businesses who feel that marketing is really important, but it's the first thing to fall by the wayside. You are welcome to have a session with myself. If you're a Staffordshire business, it's completely fully funded. And all you need to do is call the business helpline and then you'll speak with a general business advisor who will make a referral to myself. So I'll just hand over now to our guest speaker, Mo, who's from Downing's Accountants. He's going to discuss the Evolve programme and I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it then, Mo, and you can go through what you need to. Thank you, Trish. Welcome, everyone. Um, just to give you a bit of background, my name's Mo Isat. Uh, I'm a director at Danes, um, and what we've what we've done with launching Danes Evolve, which we we put into the marketplace a couple of months ago, 
is effectively a, a, a process and a, a, and a service to help business owners become more efficient, profitable and successful um, to, to effectively get them to the point where they can thrive and not just survive as business owners. So today I'm going to cover off a, a couple of points around cloud accounting, permeation of technology, uh, forecasting, dashboards and, and KPI metrics. Next slide, please, please Trish. So just to give some context to technology uh, and how it has permeated society, um, we, we all know Netflix um, has, has been invaluable during lockdown for, for most of us. Um, but the story is Netflix um, killed off Blockbuster Video, uh, if anyone knows, remembers Blockbuster Video. And that's because it adopted technology to stream content into people's homes. Airbnb is changing the way we uh, book our holidays and, and book that, that time off that we all need. It's the largest company that doesn't own any physical property, any hotels of its own, but it provides a platform to allow um, consumers to, to access um, those destinations that we all want to go and relax and enjoy. Facebook has changed how we communicate in it on a social uh, on a social level with our friends and colleagues. Um, Facebook is also the, the, the largest um, uh, content provider that provides marketing income for, for the business. Google is synonymous with everyday language and terminology. We all say, let's Google it or just Google it, uh, but it's also uh, a valuable mine of data and information on uh, consumers. Apple introduced a smartphone, I need not say a lot more, but introduced a smartphone that has revolutionized how we interact with our devices that, that are in our pockets and in our hands. But what it also did, it changed the whole um, landscape around digital music and how we, how we listen to, to music. Traditionally, record stores, HMV Virgin, they were all there. Apple introduced streaming and digital music, uh, and that permeated that particular uh, industry significantly. Amazon uh, increasingly now delivering groceries. They've had a tie up with Morrison's, uh, which means that you can have your groceries delivered to your home through the Amazon network. And it's uh, one of the largest growing companies. But again, it has a significant proportion of its revenue from data storage and servers and lots of businesses unbeknownst to them have data stored on Amazon servers. So it's not just about shopping and buying bits and pieces that you might need. It collates a lot of information on its servers because it has the infrastructure and the architecture to be able to do so. But what this represents is how technology has started to permeate society and change the way, the way we act, the way we shop, the way we, we, we choose to spend our leisure time. Uh, and that is only going in one direction and it's only going to increase with more and more businesses um, providing digital content and, and being at the forefront of technological advancement. Next slide, please, Trish. I want to talk about uh, cloud technology uh, and, and cloud accounting. Um, it's increasingly becoming the unstoppable force. Um, there's a, there's a, a key uh, metric which suggests that over 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years. That is a phenomenal amount of data that is held digitally and we all interact with, with, with data and technology. Us all being on a Zoom call today is just representation of that. Um, the fact that we can be in different locations and use cloud technology to, to seek that communication, that collaboration, to, to seek knowledge and information and, and work together uh, collectively. Big data is transforming the inf information revolution. Lots of businesses such as Facebook, such as Amazon, rely on data on its consumers to define and refine its roadmap for services in the future. How we consume data is, is revolutionizing the, the, the future projections and the future roadmap of services that we will all start to consume more and more. Along with that is the increasing role 
that automation, artificial intelligence, and the internet of things plays in that process. If we look at AI and automation, how many of our traditional processes that we, we, we took for granted are now automated and have a degree of technology interspersed with those? I can sit at home, I can check what's in my bank account through my smartphone. I can see that I've probably bought a coffee that morning on the way to work. Or equally, I can turn on my heating from my phone. Uh, I can see who's at the front door ringing the doorbell, and that's te technology permeating our everyday functions. But that role is increasingly moving to, towards businesses as well. So if we look at what the impact COVID had, we were all working from home. We, we very rarely were going into the office, if, if anything. But those businesses that embraced cloud technology at the start of pandemic or prior to that were at a better advantage because they were able to continue working collaboratively uh, as a business um, without much hindrance to their everyday processes. Uh, and that's simply just going to continue in, in, in some way, shape or form. Business owners have different locations. They may be working away. They may be work, going out to clients. Cloud technology allows them to interact with the, the, the base location, the head office or, or individual offices to understand and, and manage workforce. Uh, and, and that's through technology. We use that cloud technology significantly. But cloud technology is also leading to a shift to data-driven decision-making. And what I mean by that is business owners and, and businesses generally are relying on real-time live information to drive their decision-making processes. Increasingly, Business owners are not simply relying on information that is two or three months old to make those decisions. More sophisticated, larger businesses have been doing that for a while now. But the technology is lending itself to work with smaller owner-managed businesses that historically haven't had access to that information. But that information is, is increasingly readily available and therefore that decision-making process is based on accurate, real-time, reliable data. Next slide, please. I've got some statistics here, uh, which just aim to demonstrate the, the unstoppable force that is cloud technology. It's predicted that in 2021 this year, 78% of small businesses will rely solely on cloud technology, cloud accounting technology alone. And that might be through accounting platforms or some collaboration or CRM systems being on the cloud. So if you think about salespeople being on the road, they've been out to see a, a potential opportunity or a contact, they can log in on their smartphone, summarize the details before the meeting so they're, they're aware of who they are meeting, what notes there are, but, it, but also interact with the accounting system to understand where the numbers might be so decisions can be made more effectively and efficiently. It's predicted that the global cloud accounting market is projected to reach three billion pounds by the end of 2023, and that's a significant increase of 63% from 2018. So it just goes to show there's a, 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 a significant push towards digitization and moving accounting data, information, business processes onto, onto the cloud and in taking advantage of cloud-based technology. The benefit of that is, is easier to instantly generate process and analyze data for better decisions, better business decisions, because that information is readily available on a cloud-based system that can be accessed from different um, forms of medium. So whether it's a smartphone or a tablet or, or an iPad, it can be accessed remotely and that leads to better, swifter business decisions. Next slide, please. There was a report carried out by the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants uh, a short while ago. Uh, and they um, identified a number of key drivers uh, or benefits that uh, came about as a result of businesses using and embracing cloud technology. Just to summarize a, a couple businesses that were, were surveyed, 55% um, found that their processes were more, far more efficient than, than using the same systems without the benefits of cloud technology. 36% found significant cost savings. 
um, time savings led to 50%. So these metrics, these statistics demonstrate that the, the, the advantages and benefits of moving and embracing cloud technology that is already out there. Next slide, please. So what are the, the actual benefits of cloud accounting? We've got the statistics, but what, what does it mean in, in, in real, real terms? What it means is that it means real-time, robust, reliable, reliable information is available, can be generated, can be understood, uh, and, and decisions can be based on that real-time, robust and reliable information. It also leads to efficiency and automation. And what I mean by that is cloud accounting technology has advanced significantly from the days of you know, manual ledger books when I started training 20 plus years ago. We had physical books, physical ledgers that you know, accounting records were held in. Um, and that, that has an accessibility issue because you, you need to go into an office to, to see that information. It needs summarizing, capturing in a better format. Uh, and our, our processes around delivering year-end accounts or, or tax were, were prolonged unnecessarily. Sage uh, and, and other systems at the time changed that because it digitized that process. But again, those systems were based on desktop hard, hardware. So you physically had access, needed access to a computer to be able to access that information. Cloud accounting techno technology has moved on. So with, a, with the use of a web browser, this internet browser, you can access that accounting information. You can see how a business has performed. You can see what customers are, are still left, um, uh, left to pay. Um, so you can make decisions to uh, remotely to, to do, you know, th those processes can be adapted to, to take decisions and uh, implement change. What it also has done is lead to a degree of innovation and, and integration. There are, and I'll come on to a, a slide shortly. Innovation and integration means that systems can talk to each other rather than having multiple remote systems, not talking to each other, but doing their own, carrying out their own particular function. And that leads to multiple systems, duplication, um, and unnecessary repetition of processes. A lot of systems now integrate and talk to each other. So you might have a CRM system that talks to the accounting system, um, that talks to uh, a, a time management system. And all of those processes can be integrated. So systems start to talk to each other and processes remove, a remove duplication is removed and that efficiency starts to happen. What it also does is business owners understand financials better because they can make decisions. If information is real-time, robust, and reliable, business, business owners can understand the numbers better. We'll talk about dashboards and reporting shortly, but information can be taken from, from systems, summarized in a better format to make better business decisions. And what it effectively leads to is best practice. So there were a number of entrants into the cloud accounting market that revolutionized the way we were doing things. Simple things like bank data feeds have now permeated accounting software. So historically, you would sit down, summarize the transactions on a bank's, from a bank statement, enter those into your accounting system. Accounting systems now link in with bank, um, bank software. So that information is already pulled down into your accounting software. And that has saved uh, hours, if not days, a month for someone to actually physically key in information. Uh, so there's a trend there towards automation to, to remove manual processes that historically were done to moving away from bookkeepers keying in information to those roles now focusing more on reviewing information to, to understand what it means, what does it represent, what, what do we need to do from that information. Question might be, how do we, how do we take advantage? How does this happen then? It's through cloud accounting technology, and there are a number of platforms, number of different software platforms and providers that, that allow cloud technology to, to, be, to permeate business processes and, and be the central hub in, in a finance function. It also includes artificial intelligence and data insights. I talked about bank data feeds. That's artifi artificial intelligence coming into play, removing the elements of automation um, and automating those manual processes that were historically there. What it also does is 
allow a degree of predictive analytics. So it looks at historic trends, historic patterns, and starts to project that forward into the future. So based on historic trends, your sales for the next couple of years should be X amount. Um, it also leads to better, in, more in, insightful reporting. So the information that the traditional management accounts that are coming out of, uh, of a system provide more detailed insights, something more meaningful that decisions can, can be based upon. Next slide, please, Trish. Here's a graphic which just demonstrates the number of app integrations that can integrate with core accounting software. So we've got providers such as Xero, Sage, QuickBooks. Um, we've got Twinfield and Accounts IQ in there as well. What these other apps on the periphery do is that they integrate with that core accounting software platform to make processes uh, much easier. Um, we've got software that tracks inventory, stock, manages stock better. We've got a chaser on there, which allows automation of debt collection, credit control processes. So it will automatically summarize the outstanding debts uh, on a weekly basis, send those across to you, and you can then take action and make the, the put in the human intervention um, to, to chase up those debts. But that summary of information is aut automatically provided to you on a, on a regular basis. We've got CRM systems, which allow information to be captured uh, accurately and digitally. Um, we've got uh, systems such as HubDoc uh, and Dext uh, or Receipt Bank, which some may be familiar with. And what that does is it captures through technology document recognition software um, information from invoices. So the role of a bookkeeper or an accountant is not sitting there processing a pile of invoices. Systems will do that. And that role is then reviewing that information to, to make sure it's it's, it's going into the accounting information in the right places. So manual processes are, are being replaced by automation and digitization. Uh, and, and that role of a, of a traditional bookkeeper, accountant, finance manager is one of review and, and the human inter intervention around creativity judgment is, is at the forefront of, of that process. Next slide, please. We at Danes Evolved have developed a, a cloud ecosystem. So the image on, on the left is, is your core accounting system at the center of your finance function and app integrations such as Plio or HubDoc for bills and expenses in, intervene to replace that human, um, the human processes, the manual processes, which can be automated. We've got Dext, um, we've got Chaser that perform different functions uh, and at the moment, there are probably a, a thousand app integrations in the marketplace that carry out and automate those traditional manual processes. So our ecosystem is, is specifically designed around a business's needs. Uh, and that is through a, a process of discussion and documentation to understand how your system is, is currently used and how we can automate some of those processes to, to make your business more efficient, more streamlined, and more profitable, ultimately. Next slide, please. We move on to forecasting. Um, and just to give you a context of why forecasting is increasingly becoming more and more important, I've, uh, I've had a conversation with a number of businesses in recent weeks and months. Uh, and the common theme is that um, banks and lenders are requesting forecasting, cash flow forecasting as part of traditional submissions to banks on a, on a regular basis, whether that's monthly or quarterly. Um, uh, and I've, having spoken to a number of banks such as uh, Lloyds and NatWest, the common theme is that they are increasingly wanting to see forecasts as part of those regular submissions. Uh, and the reasons for, for that are, are based on the fact that management accounts, which is what banks have historically relied upon, uh, have not been meaningful for the last 18 months because there has been uncertainty. uncertainty. So those historic trends that they have relied upon um, uh, are now less, less important or not as relevant as they were in the past, which puts a focus on forecasting and, and, and being able to see what the business is projecting to, to generate in terms of either sales or costs or profits into the future. So we're seeing increasing demands for a 
and requests for forecasting support. Um, so it's important to just be aware that forecasting will start to become, become more and more important to, to businesses and business owners. What forecasting is effectively, uh, it's using past and present data to predict future, future trends. What do those future trends show? What, what's the outcome? Um, larger businesses always have the ability to forecast because they have a degree of sophistication through, through their, their teams, their, their, they've had the software that allows them to forecast into the future. And the whole budgeting forecasting process is built into larger businesses by their very nature. They are complex, complex businesses and therefore having those structures in place to be able to budget forecast are, are, are quite important. But what that does is that leads to data driven decisions. The permeation of cloud accounting technology also in, encompasses forecasting. So platforms are available that inter integrate with um, core accounting software such as Xero, such as Sage, such as QuickBooks to pull the information you, for, for the past and present and allows businesses to, to forecast into the future. What COVID has done though is it, it shows that resilient businesses have been able to pivot quickly, but resilient businesses being able to pivot quickly have done so with a view to what is upcoming in, in the future. Having those reliable, robust forecasts in place allow businesses to understand and change and adapt those forecasts to changing business circumstances as they arise. So there's no, there's not much point in having a forecast that you are not going to update on a regular basis because at one point in time, it will be absolutely fine. It will be relevant a month down the line. The business's circumstances could be very different. So it's important to continue to update those forecasts on a regular basis to, to make those decisions and to then be able to pivot quickly and efficiently to the changing circumstances in, in, in the sector or the industry. Ultimately, the, 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 the analogy is cash, is cash is king, cash is always king. Turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. If a business can be quite profitable, but if it doesn't have cash, it will struggle to uh, meet its obligations as they fall due. So it's vital to manage the working capital cycle effectively. And what I mean by working capital cycle is making sure you collect your debts in quickly, you delay supply payments as, 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 as much as you can, uh, but also stock is important, making sure your cash is not tied up in your stock sitting in a warehouse, because ultimately you want to be able to convert that into cash as quickly as possible. So that working capital cycle and the management of that is, is crucial to make sure a business is, is running effectively and operating effectively. Forecasting has moved away from complex Excel spreadsheets. Um, they're prone to formula errors. They take uh, an infinite amount of time to update uh, and they're very manual. Digitized platforms, AI-based systems, automated systems replace or increasingly replacing those traditional forecasting spreadsheets that are based in Excel. Uh, and there's a whole host of platforms out there that, that do that. And we are working with a number of clients to support them with those forecasting needs. Next slide, please. So forecasting is, is based on a three-way forecast. So that includes a PL, a balance sheet, and a cash flow forecast up to three years into the future. And the important thing is that is updated on a regular basis and assessed on a regular basis to understand the future cash needs that the business may have. What it also allows business owners to do is identify any funding needs that may arise into the future. So if you identify a particular uh, dip in cash, do you then start to have a conversation around um, funding those cash shortfalls? It might be a, a short term loan or a bridging loan or, or some, some, some external funding that comes in to support those, those dips in, in, in cash needs for the business. Business planning and budgeting is important as part of the, the wider governance of, 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 of financial systems and processes, but business planning and budgeting also plays an important um, part in, in, in forecasting a business's future. And typically, what we're increasingly seeing with 
forecasting platforms, it, they are based on predictive analytics. And what that means is that it relies on historic trends to predict future performance. Levers can be applied to, to change those forecasts to accommodate current circumstances, current needs, based, but typically they are based on predictive information based on past trends. Next slide, please. The purpose of forecasting is effectively better, better cash management. If a business can manage it, its cash in a, in a better way, more effectively, more efficiently, the business can operate without any constraints around cash. It also helps scenario planning. And what I mean by scenario planning is that if you're looking to invest in some plant machinery or increase the, the headcount in, in the team, Forecasting allows you to input those particular scenarios into the models to then be able to see the impact that will have on the bottom line or through, through into the future. Uh, and you can start to then take appropriate action in terms of operational delivery and operational strategy. Forecasting is not just required by lenders. If you're looking to grow, you're, you're looking to seek investment from external sources, investors, will start to want to see forecasts. Historic trends, last year's full accounts, um, management accounts are relevant, but they're all historic. Investors, lenders want to see what you expect the business to be achieving and, and performing uh, into the future. And that's such an important part for business owners to start to consider uh, if they haven't done so already, if they are seeking borrowing and, and, and some form of investment externally. Next slide, please. Here I've got an image of uh, a typical um, reporting uh, and management information pack. Appreciate, appreciate it's in dollars. It's the only image I could find without using real life client data, which I'm not obliged to do. Um, so management accounts, uh, management information is going beyond a p and and balance sheet. Because let's face it, business, business owners are not, are not accountants. They don't need to be. What they do really well is operate their businesses and, and, and grow their businesses. But management information needs to be more than just a PL and a balance sheet. It needs to cover other metrics. It needs to look at KPIs that, that might be quite unique to that sector or that business or that industry. And board reports or management reporting packs can go beyond um, that degree of simplicity to provide a snapshot of a business at a glance to, to help business owners understand how they're performing. Uh, and what I would say is the regularity of that information is quite important. So preparing management accounts on a, say, a quarterly or six monthly basis might not be enough, might not be enough at all. I would suggest that it's done at minimum on a, on a monthly basis because to get a, uh, an accurate snapshot of how a business is performing month to month, it's important to be able to understand where the, the, the financials are heading, how you've uh, performed in the past, in the recent past, um, uh, and that's so much more important to make those um, business decisions on a reliable footing, on, a, on, a, on, this, on an established basis. But technology allows you to do that in real time through reliable means and efficiently. Next slide, please. I'll talk about KPI reporting um, uh, and dashboards here. So. KPIs summarize information uh, metrics um, through simple means. Um, so when I, when I talked about previous slide um, about a p and and a balance sheet, yes, you can compare one month to the next, but KPIs are so much more important and more valuable to a business to, to get a snapshot of how something that could be quite crucial to a business can then be reviewed and tracked on a regular basis. Um, the, the, the image of the chart here shows some typical KPIs that are used for businesses at different stages of their life cycle. So it might be that businesses use gross profit margin throughout their phases of, of, of growth or maturity or, or, or startup. But there might be some other business, uh, some other KPIs that are quite crucial at an earlier phase that need to be tracked. So what we increasingly do with businesses is start to understand what are the key drivers of that business, what's important to, to achieve, how do you track your business and its performance, and then we start to monitor and track those and work with business owners to, to refine those 
and, and discuss those on a regular basis so we can make sure that, that the KPIs and the metrics are, are reviewed regularly in the context of other information, but that dashboard of KPIs allows business owners to, to see at a glance how the business is performing and, and appropriate decisions and measures can be taken to, to improve or, 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 or change or turn around a metric if it, if it doesn't quite look um, the way it should do. Next slide, please. So here I've got um, some, some essential KPIs. So I've selected five essential KPIs to demonstrate what I mean by KPIs and how businesses can track those. Most businesses use gross profit margin uh, as a typical metric. Um, knowingly or unknowingly, most businesses look at what, what the gross profit margin is. If you've got a sufficient gross profit margin, which covers your your, your costs, then you're, you're in a good position. You know that you will start to become profitable. But along with that is debtor days. So debtor days is the amount of time uh, your customers take to pay you. That effectively is, is good capital working capital management. So the, the shorter those number, number of days uh, in that ratio, the quicker customers are paying you. And it's important to, to collect cash in as quickly as you can. Because ultimately, if you've delivers, delivered a service, you've manufactured something, you've, you, you've provided some time cost, then you've converted that to, into an invoice, you've de delivered that to a client. If that is held up in, in terms of debtor days, that doesn't help your cash flow. That needs to be converted quickly into, into cash. I've also selected stock turnover here. And stock turnover is the amount of time that cash is tied up in a business um, in terms of stock that could be utilised elsewhere. I gave the example of um, stock sitting in a warehouse somewhere that isn't doing anything. You know, there, there's a risk of stock obsolescence, um, there's costing involved in managing and, and securing that stock in, in, a, in a facility. That stock needs to, needs to be turned around quickly, converted into cash um, in terms of sales. That helps the business improve its, its profitability. Payroll is typically one of the largest costs for most businesses, but it's important to track what percentage of that is of your overall revenue. Uh, and that's an important, an important measure that can be tracked and should be tracked on a regular basis. The net cash flow is the difference between your cash inflow and cash outflows. So we, 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 we look at profit, but profit is, is an accounting convention. What have you got in terms of cash as a business owner? What have you got in cash? in your business and um, can you can you predict it into the future so at any given point in time in the future can you can you identify whether your net cash flow is a positive or a negative uh, in terms of those future trends because that allows you to then do something about it you can either seek borrowing or manage that cash better so you're in a net positive cash flow position next slide please KPI tracking is important. Um, we use a platform where I've lifted this graphic from. We use a platform to work with business owners to identify crucial KPIs to their business, but we represent it in a graphical format that allows uh, business owners and us as advisors to see whether certain KPIs are on track or off track. So in this example, um, this is from a, a demo set of data. Uh, there are 18 KPIs that are off track. Now, what we would do is we would work with business owners to understand why each of those KPIs uh, are off track and what measures need to be taken to make sure they, they start to move towards being on track. Um, these are some typical KPIs. And what we do is we bespoke those KPIs to particular businesses, sectors, industries to adapt those to, to their needs. Uh, but it's important to, to set KPIs specific to your individual needs. And more importantly, track those KPIs and monitor the levers that you can apply to make sure you as a business owner and your business is on track with each of those KPIs. We also consider um, non-financial KPIs. So it might be something like net promoter scores, which are quite prevalent for, for gauging customer satisfaction. Um, we can introduce those as part of KPI tracking because it's not all about financial metrics, 
those softer non-financial metrics could be equally important to that business. Next slide, please. Questions. Does anyone have any questions? Feel free to pop those into uh, the, the chat function. I'm more than happy to answer. I don't think we have any. No, it doesn't look like there's any questions. That's not a bad thing, Mo. Did a fantastic job there. I got off lightly. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Brilliant. Um, Trish, you there? Yeah. Perfect. So I'll just hand you over now. The uh, last specialist advisor that you'll hear from is our um, funding and finance advisor, which is Matthew Huswit. So I'll just pass you over to him now. Hello everybody, good afternoon. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon and thanks Mo for a fantastic presentation. Uh, quite a rang, rang true with me because I, 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 I spent 20 years in corporate banking before I joined the chamber eight years ago and, and they were definitely moving away from assessing service, serviceability on finance from a, a profit and an EBIT, EBIT DAR basis to, to more of net cash flow and what cash is available to service this debt. So it's a uh, hugely important that, that businesses are on board with that. Um, so a lot of you will know that uh, I'm the, the funding advisor here at the, the Growth Hub. And I'm just going to do my usual rundown of the availability of finance and funding, particularly grants, which everybody asks us about more often than not. Um, just remember, it's um, it's obviously very high level that I'm going to go through, uh, and it's always better that you speak to us just to check eligibility, which grants are available due to geography, etc. But uh, I'll do a quick run through. Um, with regards to digital, it's, it's often unusual to get specific funding for a purpose. So there isn't normally funding for digital. However, as Alan highlighted earlier, there are things coming on stream that, that will fund that. The, the important thing for me is don't just look for digital funding because a lot of the other grants and a lot of the other support functions can be adapted or used to help you on your digital journey, but they may not be called digital grants. They're generally something more specific, uh, sorry, more generic. So it'll be a capital expenditure grant rather than improve your digital hardware grant. Um, there are certain areas where it's important that the specific funding and digital and environmental is, is, is more and more coming along that because of the drive by the, by the UK government as well. And the key is to just basically understand what's available, see if it fits your need. In the world of grant funding, it's often very hard and very difficult to shoehorn a project into a grant that's not specifically designed for that project. But that's what we're here for. We're here to help you to um, see what, what's available for you. So over the next five or so minutes, I'm just going to highlight the various ones that are available. Um, it's often easier for you to talk to us via the helpline, but we've also got the ability for you to send us um, a diagnostic request or a contact request through the through the uh, website as well. So please get in touch. So we'll crack on. Um, small business grant scheme has been on for quite a while now, um, not specifically related to digital, but it can help you with capital expenditure projects. It'll give you up to 60 percent to a maximum of ten thousand pounds. So if you're spending in the region of 16 and a half, 17,000 pounds on capital equipment, which can include hardware, it can include computers, it can include IT systems, just not software, um, that you can potentially get up to 10,000 pound grants. It is job dependent, you'd have to be creating growth and jobs on the back of that. A lot of these funds as well, just prudent for me to mention, they are ERDF funded, so there is general European funding rules and regulations still as to whether you're eligible for this funding. Um, the Low Carbon Business Evolution Programme, which is uh, delivered by SBEN, which is part of Staffordshire County Council. Again, not specifically a digital grant, but they're all about reducing carbon output and the footprint of businesses. So if, if they can help you by any way in uh, improving your systems to make them more energy efficient, then it could potentially be a grant that you could help um, or access there to help you. Business Innovation Centre is always a, a good contact to have. Um, uh, the guys there have got um, lots of support for anything innovative and they can also pay now up to £9,000 to help you with um, IP, patents, um, research, new systems, processes, and that can pay for third party costs for you to develop those systems. If you're in East Staffordshire, so Burton, you toxic it away, um, they've got uh, some money left still in their springboard boost fund, which is, again, up to £10,000 at 60% funding. They can assist startups. I think that's limited to up to 5000 
Um, but that can help with IT equipment. It can help with web, web development and any new technologies. So um, make the most of that if you can. And then recently announced, um, Angela from Stoke-on-Trent City Council has advised us that there's some more money in the Grants for Growth pot, particularly in their revenue fund, which is up to £1,000 to support the cost of products and website design and development. So if you're looking at developing your website or a new website, you need some um, help and support with that, then uh, again, subject to eligibility, there's up to a £1,000 grant that can help there. Okay, next one, Trish, please. Um, just a bit of legacy COVID funding, this one, the Staffordshire to Thrive grant. It was launched by Staffordshire County Council and it's up to £5,000. Now, the important one here, it's not match funded. It's 100% funded, so you don't have to put any money in it. It is restricted to certain areas. Unfortunately, Stoke-on-Trent was excluded from the start, but it was every other borough that was in the Staffordshire County. Um, the areas that have still got money left is South Staffs, Cannock, Moorlands, Newcastle and Tamworth. So if your business is in any of those areas and you're looking at investing small bits of capital equipment or, again, website development for your digital journey, then there is certainly some good money that's available there through, through that fund. It can also help with strategic planning, so business plans, cash flow forecasting, that kind of thing. So make sure you don't miss out on that. And I'll come on to that a bit. Uh, there's a bit more about that later as well. Innovate UK is always a good source. It's the, it's the UK government's innovation funding and support arm. Um, if you don't have that as a as a favourite on your web browser, it's worth just looking at that every three, four weeks, every month. That it's a competition based, but um, they have funds available for new innovations. Effectively, um, it's very much historically has been about medical technologies um, and um, new battery energy for for vehicles and cars. But I had a quick look this morning, and there's an aviation fund and a zero emission fund. Uh, as well as general funding rounds. So again, make sure that's one of your recent regular visited. Some of the funding is you've got to be in collaboration with the university or the research house. Uh, a lot of, but some of it is that you can just apply directly uh, on your own right. Made Smarter, which Alan alluded to this um, earlier on in the session, I just wanted to highlight that a bit more. It's a new scheme, it's a national digital transformation programme, but it's specifically for manufacturers. But there is a £20,000 grant fund that's available in there. We've recently had some new details through to that, which will get out on the Growth Hub newsletter and make everybody aware of that, because it's certainly something that you need to be uh, tapping into if that's available for you and you are manufacturing. I believe they are not loose. I'm trying to think of a better word of, of, of being flexible on their, their views of manufacturing. Uh, if you're making something, then they are potentially going to be able to help you. Um, something that I've not put on there, but you also need to be aware of is what's called the help to grow. I think Alan referred to it as well. It's Rishi Sunak's um, idea to um, get businesses again recovering from COVID and growth. There's a mini MBA, which is the education piece of that. But then there's also some funding for the software elements. So if you're looking to implement accounting software um, systems, then there's, I think, top of my head, it's two and a, it's 50 percent funding up to two and a half thousand pounds. Um, it's not open yet, but I think um, you can express your interest and they are looking for delivery partners who can provide this software also to, to put tenders and bids in at the moment. So that's definitely worth a Google, as Mo would say. So have a look at that. Um, and then just to finish off on the grants and digital side, Mo uh, emphasised the importance of forecasting, which I shadow and, and wholly um, back Mo in his comments there. Um, from my eight years working on grant funding, it's amazing that we see so many businesses that don't have business plans or cash flow forecasts or projections or any financial monitoring of their business. And now if you're looking to do anything regarding equity funding, debt funding, grant funding, or even looking at growth, you should certainly be having these documents in place. On the back of that, we launched what was called the Investment Readiness Programme. And this is 60% funded up to £3,000, and it's predominantly for strategic planning. So if you want to instruct your accountant to help you with preparing a business plan and cash flow forecasts over the next three years, we can provide up to 60% funding to a maximum of £3,000 to help you to do that. Um, it is also opened out for a few more things as well, like marketing strategies and plans um, and restructuring strategies as well. But you certainly, um, if you're looking to provide projections for any of the debt funds or, or grant funds, then we can help you 
um, get that. Doesn't cover management information or your year end or statutory accounts, but it will help with that strategic planning going forward. Next slide, please, Trish. I'm just conscious of time. So just to rattle through, um, a lot of you aren't interested in loans. Your first question is what, what grants are available, but I thought it best to, to top off what, what loans are available as well, because there's, there's some support out there. If you've not looked at the Midlands Engine Investment Funds, there are debt and equity funding support through there. Um, there's three companies providing loans, which are BCRS, the FSE Group and Maven Capital. And then there's two companies providing equity finance for um, growth strategies as well, which are Mercia and, and Midven. Uh, if you just Google Midlands Engine Investment Fund, there's lots more detail on there as to how they can help you um, with your growth, but they are loans and um, equity swaps. The recovery loan, which again is part of the government's um, COVID recovery strategy um, that can help you with its loans of up to 10 million, obviously dependent on the size of your business, you would just speak to your normal lender um, regarding your availability to access those. The important thing there is that they won't ask you for any personal guarantees up to quarter of a million pounds. Um, speak to your lenders. If your lender is one that won't provide those loans, then if you visit the British Business Bank website, there is a whole comprehensive list of who can deliver those. And finally, just with a local flavour, under their corporate social responsibility, Michelin Tyre PLC do a great job of delivering their Michelin Development Loan Fund. And they can provide unsecured loans of up to £50,000 with a subsidised interest rate. It's currently 2% over base rate, which is, is very cheap for commercial finance. Uh, and it's available for manufacturing and service businesses in North Staffordshire. They have a scheme in the shadow of all of their factories. So there's availability in, in North Staffordshire and Stoke for that for that loan. Um, it is job dependent, so you can't just apply to the 50,000. It's got to be, there's, a, there's a, a calculation of how many jobs you're looking to create as to how much you can look to, to borrow off them. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's a great scheme. And if you've not seen it, I definitely recommend that you look into that. And that's it from, a, from a, an available funding point of view. It was a quick high level rattle through. We obviously encourage you to um, make contact with us. Um, you can call the helpline, the 0300 number, and we can we can sort you through there. Or you can visit the website and book a diagnostic with any of our professional advisors, specialists that we've got, the HR marketing, high growth, access to finance, and also Alan with the, with the digital support there. And I would encourage anybody to do that. So visit the website or, or call us on the helpline. And thanks for your time today. Yeah, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone, guys, for attending today. And obviously, thanks, Mo, for coming along as a guest speaker. It's been really, really good. Definitely very interesting. And obviously, thanks to all the advisors for coming in and saying your little bit where we can about what we can do to help as a growth hub. Um, there is a little QR on the last slide. Um, it's just if anyone wouldn't mind scanning that for us and providing a little bit of feedback on our event today. And there, all of the contact details for Mo and obviously like Matt's mentioned, so the um, link for the website for your book, booking a review, along with the contact details for Becky as the helpline manager, the helpline number, Mo's details are in there. And there is also the option to subscribe to the weekly newsletter that goes out, which will provide you with further details. Um, and just keep an eye on the events calendar and things for every upcoming sort of campaigns that we have available. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.